We are entering a realm where affordable 3D printers are actually becoming a viable option, and even as recently as three years ago, you needed to have a little touch of DIY handiness in order to actually operate one of these machines. But that is no longer the case, and I now know multiple options that are under the $300 price point that even a squirrel can operate. So what I have before you today is one of those options, and I truly believe this is a mighty competitor. This is the Mingda Magician X2, and it is the second printer in the X lineup, hence the 2 after the X. And the X2, it weighs in at $289 US, and it comes with features well beyond what you would expect from a sub $300 machine. Now I go into every printer review with an open mind, but as you can expect, I will always default to lower expectations when dealing with cheaper options, because it is just better to have lower expectations and be pleasantly surprised than it is to have high expectations and be let down. And let me tell you, the X2 has far and away exceeded those expectations to the point where this might just be my favorite favorite budget friendly printer. This printer, it was sent to me free of charge in exchange for an honest review and I've had about 3 weeks of solid use before I felt comfortable recording this video. If we're being honest, the X2 is more akin to the S variant and the latest iPhone rather than a brand new version. There really aren't many upgrades from the previous generation so that is why it feels more like a half generational step than a whole new generation, but even still, that does not sway me from recommending this machine. Rather, it's more of a plea to Mingda to bring new tech to the X3 should the X series survive survive another generation. Although, you know what they say, if it's not broke, don't fix it, so maybe Mingda made the right call here. So in any case, what does the X2 get you over the older X model? Well, the new X2, it will come stock with a quick swap extruder, a hotbed U-shaped cable groove, it comes with a temperature indicator and a flexible build plate, and if we're being honest, I do think the upgrade is worth it, and I will touch on some of these upgrades further in the video. As for the specs of this machine, they're about the same as any other i3 bed slinger clone, except I would lean more towards the feature rich side of things. You will get strain gauge auto bed leveling, however the firmware is not going to count for the Z offset, so you're going to have to manually calibrate that out. And a quick note to mention, this machine it will not come with bed leveling screws, which is my preferred option when it comes to build plate design. Having screw adjustment is just another failure point for bed adhesion. The hot end is a direct drive setup with a BMG style extruder. This hot end it will come stock with integrated filament detection under the hood, and in my experience, loading this extruder has been mostly painless. Mingda claims this printer comes comes with a quick remove hot end assembly and in my opinion this is more of a little bit of a muddy advertising scheme. The truth is that this printer comes with a hot end that is quick to remove as compared to the previous generation. Now don't get me wrong, the entire hot end can be removed in 30 seconds simply by removing two screws, but I do have other direct drive machines that have the same speed removal capability. The X2 supports printing via USB-A, USB-C, and standard SD card, and you will find a little cute cubby hole to store your USB-A as well as an SD card, but sadly the machine lacks a storage compartment. In my many years of printing, I don't often find these storage drawers terribly useful, so this isn't a deal breaker, but I do typically find some decluttering use for them. This printer comes with integrated XY belt tensioners, which is becoming fairly standard now, but it still is worth mentioning their presence. And from factory, I did not tension my belts, and the print results I received were pretty good. So Mingda really killed it on the bed. For me, there are two really standout features to mention. The X2, it will come stock with a PEI flex plate, and if you aren't already aware, I will never choose to print on a glass bed ever again. I have too many nightmares from printing on glass. As for those standout features, Mingda has incorporated a very accurate auto aligning system for the flex plate, and this is not something that's hard or expensive to design into your printers, yet only a few players seem to actually be doing it. The other standout feature is the brand new U-shaped cable groove. The bed cable for the X2 is possibly the nicest hotbed cable I've ever seen, and it rides in a U-shaped channel that allows for a neat and tidy look to the printer. But moreover, this U-shaped groove actually allows the printer to operate with a smaller Y-axis footprint than other i3 clones, which makes this for a serious functional improvement of the X2 over its competitors. The unboxing and assembly experience left a little to be desired. Mingda opted to use terrible white crumbly styrofoam to pack this machine, and I suspect this option was chosen because it's cheaper than the standard black high density foam, and Mingda needed to take cost reduction measures in order to outfit this printer with extra features. But be aware that that white styrofoam does tend to break apart during shipping, so before for your first print, you're definitely going to want to inspect the nooks and crannies to make sure there's no foam that got jammed in the gear teeth or any other undesirable places. 
And while we're on the topic of cost reduction, a great deal of this printer's components are custom injection molded plastic. So take what you will from that statement, but this machine, it's not a performance beast. So I don't believe that's ever gonna affect the print quality. And I actually am happy that it reduces the weight of the machine for easier portability. As for the assembly, the process was not as fast as I would have hoped, but it was incredibly easy. Ming to design custom XY gantry mounts in the printer base, and that is going to allow for incredibly easy one-man assembly of this machine. The screen firmware is as you would expect for a machine of this price point. It looks like something that was programmed by a small one or two man developer team, but that being said, I am very pleased with how it operates. Clicking on the screen results in an immediate response. There is no processing delay between when you click and when the operation takes effect. The menus are organized well and the menu names are translated correctly. Finding a setting you want is quick and easy and there's no bells and whistles here, but that's perfect because sometimes those added bells and whistles just are useless features that you really need to navigate around. The build volume is a standard but respectable 230 by 230 by 260 millimeters and that's gonna get you 95% of all the prints you're ever gonna need. As previously mentioned, the hot end is a direct drive setup, so that will allow you to easily print TPU on top of the other standard filaments that you can print in an open air environment. And the latest firmware allows you to increase the maximum printing temperature to 300 degrees Celsius so you can utilize the all metal hot end that this machine ships with. The print quality is definitely not perfect, but I believe it is well above average for this price point. Keep in mind that the prints I'm displaying here are from a completely unmodified and bone stock print profile imported directly from Cura 5.2.2. For reviews, I never tune the machine hardware or the slicer profile settings because a lot of my viewers might be unable to calibrate for one reason or another. For this review, I mainly printed a bunch of small prints in place models, some mechanical models, and a few compliant mechanisms in Polylite and Polyterra. I want to first start with the obligatory Benchy, and wow, am I impressed with this model. It printed perfectly, and I would be fabricating issues with it if I chose to say something bad. And before we continue further, I would like to take a moment to express my gratitude for your support. Guys, creating these videos is a very time-consuming and challenging process, and your support truly means the world to me. If you have not already done so, I would sincerely appreciate it if you considered subscribing to the channel and becoming a member of the community. Your support really goes a long way in enabling me to continue creating content and delivering this level of quality. Next, I printed a calibration cube and I noticed a little more variation between the X, Y, and Z than I normally would in a printer. But to be honest with you, calibrating the steps for these motors is very simple. So correcting this issue should take no more than 15 minutes. The results here are not perfect, but they're pretty much good for everything but precision printing. And you can see this effect on the torture toaster as I'm not able to move any of the pins. As for the rest of the toaster, the toast moves well, the gears move freely, and the overhangs are honestly fantastic. I was very surprised to see the stringing here because I did not see stringing on a single other model that I printed. So this is a mystery to me, especially because I would consider that moderate to high stringing is occurring on this model. I saw this pull copter on the front page of printables and it brought me back to my younger days, so I absolutely had to print it and there is not a single flaw. The quality is fantastic, all of the pieces assembled easily, the copter keys into the handle with ease, the gearing lines up, and it flies well. I freaking love this thing. While I was testing the X2, Dan from Flexi Factor released his brand new Viking Gnome, and of course I had to supersize it. Again, there is not a single flaw here. Everything printed easily, perfectly, and far better than I ever would have expected from a machine at this price point. These models typically have a lot of slack in the joints, so as I expected, they move quite smoothly. My grandfather is a fan of military aviation, and especially the F-14s, so I decided to print this model for him in Polyterra before I went to see him. There are some Z anomalies, but I am pretty confident that's actually not due to this printer. The wings here fold out perfectly well, and this is just a super cool desk piece for anyone that's going to be interested in aviation. So as I mentioned, I also printed a few compliant mechanisms, and the first one up is this chip bag clip. This design, it is so bad, I refuse to link it in the description. I mean, this is the most basic model I could have ever printed, and it still sucks but I suppose you can say that the printer did a good job. After that, I decided to print this spring torture test. Now, this model is actually incredibly difficult to print, and the fact that it succeeded actually blows my mind. I had other printers twice the price of the X2 that could not even complete this model, so I 
am impressed. I noticed some overhang droops, but overall it looks great seeing as other printers couldn't even complete the job successfully. I also printed this very cool compliant catapult. Now this printed with some seriously tight tolerances and the pegs hardly fit together, but I'm not sure if that's fault on the printer or on the model itself. I had one issue with stringing, but that is a completely self-inflicted wound because I did not add support when I was printing. The tiny pieces adhered to the build plate with ease, and once I finally got this thing assembled, I had an absolute blast tinkering with it. Simply put, my final thoughts are fantastic. If you can get past the awful packaging and the mildly tedious build process, this machine is wonderful. Mingda has crammed in so many hardware and design features into this package at such a price point that eliminates all common excuses not to give this machine a try. The only reason I would not recommend this machine is if you're looking for a premium product. If you want a Bamboo Lab, Anchormaker, Prusa quality printer, then the X2 is not for you. But otherwise, I urge you to check this out for yourself because there's a great possibility that it suits your needs perfectly. If you would like to learn more about this printer, check the link in the description.